Hi everybody, my name is Robert Sass. I live in Linköping, which is one of the biggest cities in Sweden. And I'm currently operating one of the biggest elder care organizations in that city. And that comes with dif difficult challenges. One of the challenges is that most normal people, when they have their kids to sleep, they count sheep. Me and my daughter, we count my coworkers. Um, however, the, the topic that I'm here to talk about today is successful leadership. And to understand my presentation, I would like to clarify social media. I would also like to clarify Generation X and Y. And I would like to clarify a study that was conducted in the 60s. Uh, just so we are on the same page and we're talking about the same thing. Uh, social media is basically a digital platform that you can access online. And the most common structure on social media is that you can upload different files, you can upload pictures, you can upload images, different quotes. And other people can go into your social media and approve these pictures by giving them different symbols. And what studies have shown is that we, uh, we, we release hormones in our brain when we receive these kinds of approval. And they are also making us kind of addicted to, to social recognition. Uh, another very common structure of social media is the form of discussion. Nowadays on social media, uh, a CEO of one of Europe's biggest uh, corporations can have a debate with an individual that's been living on welfare and don't really want to work for the last 20 years. The odds that these two people would have a debate regarding politics before social media would be very slim. So that was the social media part. I would also like to address Generation X and Y. Generation X and Y are people that are born in late 80s, during the 90s, and the so-called millennials. These are people, um, or most of these people, wouldn't be able to imagine a life without cell phones, without computers, uh, because they've been raised during the digital era. And then we have a study that was conducted in the late 60s uh, within, within the field of psychology, where they altered the, lightning, the light settings in that factory and uh, measured efficiency and productivity. And what they found or the resulting conclusion of that study was that the, no matter how much they changed the light setting, productivity and efficiency would always improve or incre increase. And uh, the conclusion were that the people in the factory felt motivated by being a part of experiment, being a part of something bigger. And therefore, every time something changed, they became more productive. Now, to my presentation, for approximately one year ago, I stepped into an uh, organization. In my abstract, I, I, I wrote dysfunctional, but I would like to withdraw that and say not highly functional organization. Uh, it wasn't really any high... Um, um, the, the satisfaction from the elders weren't really pleasing. The co-workers were mediocre in regards of the trust for the management level and we received a lot of complaints from uh, corporations that we had collaborations with. And I remember that I had been a manager for almost one year before I stepped into this organization. I remembered that I wanted to make some changes. I wanted to make some changes that actually mattered. The first uh, restructure that I did in the organization was the kind of uh, the, the part where I talked about approval. Um, we altered the introduction program, and one part of the introduction program was that during the third or fourth day of introduction, I would meet one of the co-workers that I have uh, employed, and even if we would be a lie, I would just stare them in the eye and I would tell them, you have done a really, really good job. I've heard from your co-workers that you, they're very glad to have you here, and I heard from the elders that they're very pleased with the care that you're giving. Most of the time I didn't really even know their first name. But I will tell them this because somewhere in my mind I were convinced that approval is something that we need. And the people that I recruited were a lot of the people that I talked about when I talked about Generation X and Y. Within elder care these days we have digital tools, we have cell phones and we continued with um, sending out text messages. Every time that we saw that, for example, one of the staff cleaned for five more minutes at, at one of the elders' places, we would send them a text message. We saw that you did this great job. Now, positive feedback is not something new, it's not rev revolutionary. But I want, what I would like to, to spread, it, and the idea that I want to spread here is, positive feedback is a leadership style. But nowadays, during the 2000s, it's not something that we can use as leadership. It is essential for leadership due to the structure that had been, uh, the social structure that has changed due to the digital <laughs> development. Because we as people don't really just need attention and approval on a daily basis. We crave it during the 16 hours that we're not, under, not working.
Another structure difference or, or reorganization that I did was that every month we have staff meeting where I met the staff uh, together with my management team. And I remember the first staff meeting that I had because I was convinced by now that somewhere along the line, if I reply what's on social media and actually use that kind of structure in my organization, something good would happen, something good would come out of it. So the first meeting was very embarrassing because we didn't really talk to each other. Because every time my coworkers asked a question, I would just ask them back, how can we as a team solve this? And it was dead silence. And the reason that I kept on replying with, with new questions was because I was convinced that the social structure, the social hierarchy where a manager tells you what's wrong and what's right does not really exist in that extent as it did for 40 years ago. Somewhere along the line for the last 20 years we have broken down the social hierarchy by debating with each other, by making the world much much smaller through internet and through social medias. After the third and fourth staff meeting, people started talking to each other and the result was fantastic. For the first, the, 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 the biggest effort for me was that they didn't come to me with all their minor issues. They actually solved it together in a group. The third thing that um, was uh, th that I restructured or, or the thought that I had with me was I wanted them to be a part of something bigger. So for three months I chased different media channels, I, I uh, chased the newspapers, the TV stations, the radio stations. And after three months one of the newspapers came and did an article, it was a front page and it was a really huge article and the heading was, she is the eldest favorite. What happened next is pretty, it's the snowball effect, uh, she shared this article on social medias. The other co-workers shared the, so, shared the post or the news article on social media, media because in the article it also stated that, that the other co-workers were doing a fantastic job, so they felt pride. We sent flowers to the co-worker that been in the article. She shared these flowers on social medias and it just kept on going. Two weeks later a local TV station came, did a clip the clip was shared on social medias among the co-workers. We sent her flowers and the flowers were shared as well. In December 2019 the region's biggest newspaper came once again and uh, did an article and the article's head was they have found the key to successful elder care. Because by this time we also received a lot of statistics back. The Swedish government has an institution that uh, makes different surveys and one of the survey questions is how satisfied are you with your care? And on that question the organization that I had stepped into and which we had reorganized by working with positive feedback as an essential working tool not as something that we need to form a group and by giving room for discussion we received 96% satisfaction among our elders. Besides this, we did different internal measurements. We measured how happy are you with your workplace? How happy are you with your manager? The result was 4.8 in happiness with your workplace on a five graded scale and 4.6 on how happy you are with your management level on a five graded scale. Now, TEDx is all about spreading ideas and that's the reason that, that, that I'm here today because the idea that I, I want to spread it's not that if you're a manager, if you're a leadership position, that you're supposed to run back to your organization and alter it to be as similar to a social media platform as possible. No, that's not the idea. The idea and the idea that I'm here today that I try to spread is that we have to adapt. Something in society has changed a lot since the year of 2000. And to become a successful leader and to lead the new generations, we have to understand them. And somewhere the phrase, if you can't understand your co-workers, they will never be able to understand where you want to lead them, is more true now than ever. Thank you for listening.